Divine Intimacy by Father Gabriel of St. Mary Magdalene The Power of Jesus Third Sunday of Lent The Presence of God O Jesus, Divine Strength, I come to you to seek support for my weakness and infirmity. The Meditation On the first Sunday in Lent, the Church showed us Jesus in his struggle with the devil. But while she presented him to us then, in an attitude of humble defense before the devil's temptations, today we see him in an attitude of attack which culminates in a glorious victory. The Gospel tells us that there was a poor man possessed by the devil, and he was dumb. By a single act of his divine power, Jesus cast out the devil, and when he went out, the dumb spoke, and the multitudes were in admiration at it. But the enemy, as if to avenge his defeat, insinuates into the minds of the Pharisees the shameful calumny. He casteth out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Jesus is accused of being possessed by the devil and of having received from the devil power to free the possessed man. Our Lord, however, wills to completely unmask the enemy, and with clear logic replies that Satan cannot give him such power, because thereby Satan himself would be helping to destroy his own kingdom. No, it cannot be so. Jesus drives out devils by the finger of God, by divine virtue. If Satan is powerful and his satellites join with him in the struggle to rule over man, Jesus is still more powerful and will overcome him and snatch away his prey. He has come to destroy the kingdom of Satan and to establish the kingdom of God. If in these days God still permits the devil to carry on his evil work against individuals and society, Jesus, by his death on the cross, has already paid the price for our victory. This treasure is at our disposal. Through the virtue and grace of Christ, every Christian has the power to overcome the enemy's attacks. The triumph of evil should not disturb us, for it is only an apparent victory. The might of Jesus is stronger, and he is the one and only victor. We must work in union with Jesus that his victory over evil may be our own. In today's Gospel, the Master himself shows us several aspects of this collaboration. Every kingdom divided against itself shall be brought to desolation. In these words, our Lord tells us that union is the secret of victory, union with him above all, for without him we can do nothing, but also union with our neighbor. If we would work for the triumph of good, let us collaborate, one heart and one soul, with our superiors and our fellow religious. We can often labor with much more efficacy in achieving good if we give up our own personal ideas and act in perfect harmony with others. It may be necessary sometimes to renounce opinions, plans, and ways which are better in themselves. Let us not be deceived. Unity is always to be preferred. Division never leads to victory. He that is not with me is against me, Jesus adds. Christianity does not tolerate indifference. He who is not firmly on Christ's side, working with him for the extension of his kingdom, by this very fact is opposed to him and to what is good. He is an enemy of Christ and a partisan of evil. To omit the good that one could do and ought to do is evil, and is consenting to the extension of evil. The first condition necessary for victory over evil is active cooperation in the work of Christ in union with our brethren. The second condition is vigilance. Jesus warns us that the enemy of good is lying in wait. Even after he leaves a soul, 
He is ready to return, more powerful than before, with seven other spirits more wicked than himself. If he finds the soul empty and open to his snares, to halt the approach of evil, we must watch in prayer, filling our heart with God, so that there will be no place in it for the enemy. And there is no place when the soul is wholly united to God through the acceptance and observance of his word, of his will. In fact, Jesus answered to the woman who praised his mother, Yea, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Of course the virgin is blessed, because she gave birth to the Redeemer, but she is still more blessed through her perfect union with him in the observance of his word. This blessedness is not reserved for Mary alone. It is offered to every soul of good will and constitutes the greatest guarantee of victory over evil, for one united to God becomes strong with his strength. The Colloquy My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the snare. Look thou upon me, and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. Keep thou my soul and deliver me, I shall not be ashamed, for I have hoped in thee. O eternal trinity, O most high and eternal trinity, you give us the word full of sweetness and love. O sweet and loving word, Son of God, if our nature is weak and capable of every evil, yours is strong and disposed to good, because you have received it from your eternal, all-powerful Father. O sweet word, you have strengthened our weak nature by uniting it to yourself. Our nature is fortified by this union, for the power of your blood takes away our weakness. We are also strengthened by your doctrine, for he who follows it in truth, perfectly clothing himself with it, becomes so strong and capable of good that he loses, as it were, the rebellion of the flesh against the spirit and can overcome every evil. So you, O eternal word, substituted for our human weakness the strength of your divine nature, which you received from the Father. And this strength you have given to us by your blood and your doctrine. O sweet blood, you fortify and illumine the soul. In you it becomes angelic, because you cover it with the fire of your charity, so that it forgets itself entirely and can no longer see anything except you. O divine truth, you give so much strength to the soul which clothes itself with you, that it never falters under the weight of adversity or beneath the burden of troubles and temptations, but in every struggle it gains a great victory. I am wretched, because I have not followed you, O eternal truth, hence I am so weak that in every least tribulation I fall. St. Catherine of Siena